Welcome to Word Roast, or as YouTube calls it, keywords nobody is searching for. Today's word is librocubicularist. Don't worry, I'm not putting any magic spell on you. I can barely spell the word. Librocubicularist means a person who reads books in bed. Yeah, there's a fancy shancy tongue twister word for that thing your mom scolds you for. Remember, a librocubicularist is a person who reads books in bed. If you're staying awake at night reading the scrolling on teleshopping network, you're not a librocubicularist. You're just an insomaniac. Get it treated. I have been told that watching my sit down comedies is a great cure. Librocubicularist, this word has Latin roots. Libro comes from the word liber, which means book, the same word that gives you library. Don't confuse it with that star sign Libra. If that is the first word which entered your mind, then you should read more books. The other part of the word comes from cubicle, which means a bedroom. Yeah, that thing in the office is actually a bedroom. No wonder there are so many workplace romances these days. Somebody is reading a Latin dictionary. Next time your boss scolds you for sleeping in office, you tell him that you are doing the exact thing you're supposed to do in a cubicle. Be very clear about the sleeping part. Most bosses don't get my subtle jokes. This word librocubicularist was coined in the year 1919, just over a hundred years ago. I think my mom has leftovers in the fridge which are older than this word. It was made by an American author. Yeah, this was a time when things were still being made in the USA. Now dictionaries, words, everything are made in China. It took so many years for having a word to describe this amazing phenomenon of reading a book in bed because our ancestors were not doing this. To read a book in bed, you need three things, a book, a bed and a bulb. And it took a lot of years of human ingenuity to reach that stage. Before the 16th century, there were no books. Most of the books were in manuscripts or deerskin, not very comfortable to roll up and take it to your bed. And even when books started getting printed in the 16th century, initially they were very heavy. To hold a book in bed in your hands, you needed very strong arms. And if you had such strong arms, probably you're a slave and not allowed to read in the first place. But slowly books became more convenient to hold, but the beds were not really convenient. They were still made of straw. Not a great place to sit back, relax and read the Fifty Shades of Grey. Enact it? Yes. Read? Nope. But from the 17th century, beds became more comfortable. And some geeks like me started taking books to bed. But the problem was, there was no electricity. To, so, to read a book in bed at night, you had to hold a candle or a kerosene lamp. And the danger with that is, once in a while if you feel drowsy while reading the book, the candle or the kerosene lamp could tip over and burn the liber, the cubicle and the librocubicularist. And in some rare occasions, the librocubicularist's wife. This was such a fear in the 18th century that parents of daughters used to worry giving their daughter to a geek. It was considered safer to marry off your daughter to a knight rather than a person who reads books in the night. Because a knight may go to the war but die alone. But this guy reading books at night, we will die and take your daughter along with him. This is the reason why our mothers always scold us for reading a book in bed. They are worried for their daughter-in-law. And their bigger fear is for themselves, because if something happens to the daughter-in-law, the first case is filed on the mother-in-law. But all these problems were solved in the late 19th century, when Edison invented the bulb. That changed everything, except it created one new problem, when our grandfather started bragging about how hard they worked and read books under the streetlight. If you notice, it's only grandfathers who always brag about reading under the streetlight. I've never seen a grandmother who tells about her difficulties of reading a book under the streetlight. I don't know whether what was considered more dangerous in those days, a grandmother under the streetlight or a grandmother reading a book. Anyways, it took millions of years of evolution and thousands of years of civilization and human brilliance for us to reach a stage where we can read a book in bed. And it's been amazing over the last hundred years when books and beds have been competing with each other to give us the best pleasure. Beds have become warm, soft, comfortable, and books have become racy, pacey, juicy, because they have to compete with amazing beds where you just sit back and you already fall asleep. I think 
writing has become much much better thanks to comfortable beds though some people do complain that modern books are not really memorable but they are competing with memory foam this is the part of the video if more people have been watching it i would have been doing some kind of brand promotion for a mattress company but because most of you are not watching these videos i'll continue to the last section of this video which is that you should enjoy this great pleasure which is a true mark of human civilization of reading a book in bed i believe that we could be the last generation to enjoy this pleasure already the next generation is just sitting back in bed and scrolling on instagram reels or watching silly videos about unnecessary words on youtube i will not ask you to share like or subscribe to this video shut down this video hit the bed read a nice book see you next week with the final word of the first season of word roast my name is sai kiran